In order to liberate our sentient beings, let us generate the Supreme Bodhicitta. Now let us continue to study the text on transforming suffering and happiness into enlightenment. I think this particular teaching is very practical, especially when we are facing all kinds of extraordinary events nowadays, and it is probably uh, quite applicable right now. When we study Madhyamika, Abhidharma, or Buddhist logic, all of them could build a really solid theoretical foundation for us. This is wonderful. I think to have solid foundations in the five treatises could definitely help us to dispel the deluded view in our mind stream. Because from the beginningless time, every one of us have de uh, developed the deluded view and deluded habits. On top of that, after we arrive to this world, we are tinted by our family and social environment as well as friends. We're very much influenced by them, and uh, we could be our habits could be tinted by them as well, which uh, lead to direct uh, influence on our right view and right action. At that time, if you studied rather quite in depth in terms of the theory in Buddhism, such as Madhyamika or Buddhist logic and so on, then whatever wrong view arises, you can then hold, uh, uphold the weapon of wisdom and cut through such wrong view. This is uh, going to be rather easy. However, without such foundation, then every one of us with habits, with uh, afflictions, with such strong impact of those, then you could feel that your view is the most right of all, and you would continue to follow your own view, your deluded view. If you have the right view, it would be easy for you to eradicate the wrong view. Therefore, I really encourage the young people to study uh, with great effort uh, uh, on the topics of the five treatises, on the topics of the esoteric and uh, exoteric teachings. Even if you cannot even if you cannot dedicate to one in particular. Of course, for some people who have very stable faith and um, uh, they want to specialize in, for example, Madhyamika or uh, Pure Land practice, that's fine as well. That's very good. However, I do think for a majority of people, since we have such wrong views, uh, our environment and surroundings could create lots of influence on you. Therefore, it is quite important for you to have the investigative awareness and to develop such, in, such awareness is quite um, useful. So to the young people, uh, especially since you're still young, still have uh, the clear thoughts, clear thinking, clear inference, and great analytical skills, and uh, have uh, lots of investigative investigative uh, capacity, then uh, I think you can study mainly the five treatises. Uh, but for people who are already aged and maybe not so sharp anymore, and um, at that time, if you were to explore into the sutras and shastras, it might be a little difficult. Just as Pachurian Boche said, 
young practitioner, young practitioners and uh, aged uh, scholars are actually not so successful. There are lots of seniors nowadays who want to commit themselves into studying. Into studying, uh, I notice that there are old people with only one or two teeth left in their mouth. They would talk and uh, mumble, saying that I want to study Buddhist logic. I have lots of faith. I think in such a way, by the time they finish studying Buddhist logic, maybe they'll lose all their tooth. I remembered I met an old lama uh, who's around 60 years old, and at that time he only had one tooth left. Uh, when he uh, when he studied uh, uh, Buddhist logic, since he only had one tooth left, and which contrasted quite a bit with his tongue, I think for such kind of person to study uh, Buddhist logic, can she ever succeed in that? I think it's a, a little bit questionable. And there are young people who are who have great wisdom, who are very sharp, but they what they only do is to chant Om Mani Padme Hum all the time. Of course, chanting mantra is encouraged. Um, I remember that I encountered a 60-year-old Lama late, uh, recently, and he said that he has he has some regret because when he was young and have a good memory, he didn't. Uh, invest his time in studying the five treatises. He felt that it is the best for him to practice, to engage in actual practice. Uh, I think there are great practitioners who uh, who engaged in actual practice since a young age, but that is quite rare for majority of people because you had lots of uh, influence from your environments and uh, from different aspects that then um, therefore have lots of doubts and so on. For this kind of people, it is the best to study and listen extensively. Now let's continue with the actual class today. Previously, we have already talked about to supplicate the three jewels, to supplicate the uh, Dharma protectors as well as spirits. If your mind is not so strong at the time, you should supplicate and say that may the three jewels supplicate, uh, bless me so that my suffering and happiness, especially suffering, could be transformed into enlightenment. Whomsoever you supplicate to Avalokiteshvara or Manjushri or three jewels, uh, this is the way to supplicate uh, so that the suffering won't become an obstacle. The second way is when your mind is a little bit more stable, when you have more faith in yourself and confidence in yourself, at that time you should supplicate to the three jewels and uh, worldly uh, spirits saying that whatever uh, the unfortunate and uh, the unwanted illness and obstacles, please let me have all of them. This is quite a grave challenge. The majority of practitioners don't dare to make such kind of supplication, just as previously stated, like the just like the hippies in the West, they have such kind of rebellious spirit. They re rebel the social norms, they rebel the traditional values, and uh, that's the actions they would take. I think it has some hidden meanings under. As Buddhists, if, even if we're really scared of obstacles and supplicate and pray all the time, please let my practice be uh, without obstacles, no obstacles at all. Even if you pray in such a way, obstacles would still come, would still approach. Obstacles and pain, they would occur inevitably. 
Of course, without without obstacles, it would be wonderful. But if it happens, then we should be prepared. We should have such feel, such determination to say that if it comes, it comes, and、uh, if I can't stop it,、uh, if I can't stop it, maybe I should just face it with great、uh, courage, and I should view such suffering and obstacle as.、Uh, As happiness, because maybe with the condition of such obstacles, it would be helpful to my actual practice. So at that time, we should think from different perspectives. Just as maybe some things are not so wonderful to accept and the,、um, on the cursory outlook, but once you contemplate on it, it might be beneficial for you、um, in its function. As previously stated, such as bitter medicine to all of us, maybe it would be beneficial for our illness, and some food might not be very tasty, but. But it might be very nutritious, so we should accept the challenges,、uh, accept the obstacles as a challenge and、uh, as a beneficial factor to our practice.、Uh, yesterday, I talked also about a durian、uh, when. Uh, when we smell durian, we may feel that、uh, it, it is quite disgusted.、Uh, when I went to Singapore before, one of the Dharma teacher who lived next door to me really enjoyed durian. Sometimes when people give to me durians, I would give it to him right away. But I will lock up my door to avoid the smell of durian because it really stinks. I think sometimes it is exactly the same as suffering, because there are there are situations that we just can't transform suffering into enlightenment. Other than Dory and、uh, also dislike、uh, stinky tofu, I tried a few times, but every time I get close to that smell, I I feel like I want to throw up. I have no courage of trying stinky tofu. So if I cannot transform stinky tofu into enlightenment, maybe there are times that I can't transform suffering into enlightenment either.、Uh, so I think there are all new challenges that we have to face. There are people as long. I I think we just need to get accustomed to it and to get used to it. Maybe there are things that seems to be rather difficult at the beginning, but、uh, difficult to accept at the beginning. But it might be very beneficial to our mind. Just like moxie or surgery. It is definitely not enjoyable. However, since you understand taking up such procedures, such medical procedures,、uh, could be beneficial to your health, then you would、uh, bear such、uh, such pain. Also, in terms of forbearance. It depends on our own value system. I notice that people, young people nowadays, really enjoy tattooing.、Uh, their peacocks and uh, uh, celebrities and、uh, athletes and different different tattoos, different patterns. And、uh, when I watch them tattooing, it seems that they are enduring lots of pain at the time. However, in Thailand and Vietnam, I think they really like. Like tattoos, they feel that it is a sign of of、um, spiritual strength. Also, they want to tattoo either tigers or、uh, elephants because those are symbols of heroism. So once they think of that kind of value, they uphold in their mind, then they can endure the pain on their body. So this is really a challenge. 
This is a challenge of uh, physical physical aspect of our body, and there are challenges of mind as well. At first, it may be difficult to uh, enjoy, to accept it, but once you do, in fact, it could be very beneficial to you.